ஒரு <laughs> Is it possible during a uh, break in and out, there are two points of contact? Yeah, possible. It is, it is a, it, I would say it's a good uh, sharpness or good uh, observation only. You can discreetly say that in-breath is here and out-breath is here. Usually it will appear like in one place, but if you are sharply... Uh, observe uh, the places are changing uh, in breath out breath as well as while you are keep on practicing also the the point of touch is shifting little little so you can everyone must be diligently observed oh, actually that, that is a gap between in and out yeah it is a mass madhyam pratikara the gap yeah that when you are observing lot of uh, it is like when you are running a cartoon film in a slow motion and when you are running the slow motion you may find 50% of your screen is in darkness and the splash happen and then the darkness comes and another flash happen another darkness happen at the form from one screen to the next screen there will be little changes so our mind made the intermediate changes during the dark time that is how the animation happens so exactly the same thing happen uh, but the thing is we can't run our machine slow motion we are run, uh, running at a such a speed we don't know how to run it slow motion when it in a run in slow motion in other words we can say thin slicing of time you can see everything happen in uh, episodes in between two there is a there is a the black hole or gap a dark area and within that the mind can imagine and the mind can fabricate uh, any story so therefore you have to observe uh, the whatever may the phenomena the beginning the middle the end as if you are a outside you are an outsider observe in a very in a very patient way without getting involved in emotionally without getting reactive and assuming way when you observing uh, just like the inbreath and outbreath just like a cartoon film you can see lot of the black spots lot of gaps lot of dark holes and within that only our storytelling fabrication adjustments manipulation happen uh, if you know uh, if you know this what is happening the situation is fairly under your control otherwise you don't know on uh, who, with whom agenda we are working with uh, behind that everything happening according to your uh, habits according to your addictions liking and disliking uh, the complete story appear but uh, in between lot of black holes in between lot of gaps so whenever you see you find the whole world is an agglomeration nothing but an agglomeration here and there bright spots are there in the dark screen so you make a picture you make a story you make a uh, continuum to have a story that is how it happens so unless otherwise you are to see yourself you never believe it because it is happening in such a speed so first thing is to little slow down slow down means increase the mindfulness reduce the amount of uh, objects coming in 
and then one day uh, you can uh, see things as they are. Otherwise, objects are happening in a such a fast speed. Mindfulness is so weak, even if you are trying your best. So therefore, storytelling, fabrications, manipulations are going on according to your liking and disliking. Ultimately, once a bad thing happens beyond your control, then only you regret for what happened. If you know there is no assurance, there is no mistakes. Even if you know the mistakes happen, but you know there is no second person involved. You are the very person from the B, A, B, C, from the beginning to the middle and the end, it is uh, involved and therefore nothing to find fault with others, nothing to feel guilt, but instead it's a good chance for you to in future not to do the same mistake. But then during that time, it also uh, has some vibration. Should I just continue? Point A to point B. I don't have to say it. The vibration is not me, it's not mine, it's not under my control. Uh, some recognize this as a vibration, some recognize this as a lightness. Some recognize it as a light perception, some recognize it as a sound, uh, many, many facets are there. So this is the rock bottom and the ultimatum. Upon that only all the other drama happens, so you have to come down to the very deep layers of the consciousness. Then there you see the <coughs> continuum, uh, just like a canvas of the picture. If you are looking at the picture, you can't see the canvas. If you have to see the canvas, you can't entertain the picture. In the meditation, you have to see through the picture to see the canvas. And when you go to the canvas, two people experience the same. This vibration, this sound of silence or light or light perception, whatever it may be, it is throughout there. Upon that only all the other uh, physical, verbal, mental deeds are happening. So you have to calm down these physical, mental deeds or see through them, then you can see the canvas. When you go to the canvas, all are human, no discrimination whether it's a male, female, Buddhist, non-Buddhist, developed person, no undeveloped person, nothing. So therefore, whenever you go down there, the mind is... Uh, this we also we fairly discuss. Mind find difficult to get the priority. What should I look into? Should I look into the gap in between or should I be look into the phenomena in between gaps? So, yeah, so that let the mind to decide. It let the mind to face it. Let the mind to go prepare it and see. Maximize it more and more, season it more and more, ultimately you may find they are, both of them are reciprocal each other. With respect to the gap only the phenomena happen, with respect to the phenomena only gap happen. Or with respect to the light, darkness happen, with respect to the darkness, light aspect. So otherwise there is no game, there is no go. So let the mind familiarize it and uh, then you find it's a, it's a cosmic drama, it's a universal energy. And uh, so you have to be a just a neutral observer without withdrawing an uh, inferential uh, involvement, without a judgment. Just look at it. So that means you feel that inward trip. Day by day you are uh, familiarizing. Day by day you are seasoning. But I wonder why this point was not brought up for the beginner because I think it might be easier just that uh, more than just focusing on breathing and breathing out because once that you uh, set up the point A and B, it seems to be easier to have a pathway to walk along from my opinion. So you can be a good teacher. <laughs> Uh, and once, once you come up to that, you feel like sharing with others. It is unavoidable. But the thing is, we have the huge communication gap. Because we have our own values, we have our own signs, we have our own symbols. So we love the facts more than, we love the symbol more than facts. 
We are completely engrossed with symbols. So how to communicate? So I think by now we are doing them fairly good. If you are going to be smart, we will mess up with it. So the Buddha says, once you come to know, it's uh, nothing uh, but you have to feel like sharing. Then it's another hell. But the other person is other directed, he is with the different symbols, different values, different things. And you are going to talk Greek, person who do not know Greek. So what the hell? So therefore wait till the situation mature. Inject in a very slow doses. Don't try to give a big, uh, big un, uh, highly undigestible protein to the infants. They have to give half digested food. Easily digestible. And then only the once it, it come up to the, once the digestive system become mature, only you can give a, the proteins. So therefore you have to know the synchronization. Pumping in a little by little, piecemeal basis. Otherwise, uh, it can lead to complications. Can I ask one more question? Sorry. During uh, walking, uh, I should pay attention to my feet, like my lower part of the body, right? And uh, if some other thing in my body make me feel something, then I have the thought that related to another thing. I just want to clarify. I know that I should pay attention to only the lower body part, but I'm just wondering whether when that uh, interruption by another body part lead me to the story from the past. So that is uh, it's not right? The faculty number six, I forgot the name. Chitta. The six sense of faculty. No, it's Chitta. So actually my body part that interrupts my thought at that moment, there is a chitta coming in. So chitta is not necessary to come up by on its own. Uh, you have to you have to solve this problem this way. In order to keep your stream of consciousness, in order to keep your mindfulness, you appoint an object, and that is to say, in breathing, the rubbing sensation at the nostrils. Or you can feel the rising and falling of your abdomen. In the walking you see the, the touch of the ground with the soul. So that is to keep the track with. While it is happening, a lot of imaginary thing can happen, a lot of realistic thing can happen, a lot of internal thing can happen, a lot of external thing can happen. So you can't do away with it. When, that, when such a intrusion happens, uh, what must be the priority? That is the question. Am I correct? So when that happens, if it is internal your body, if it is not an imaginary, if it is not a hallucination, that is also a valid object. Now you have already a pointed object that is to keep in the left, right left, and the left left. That is also the touching sensation. And there there is a mosquito bite happens, for example. And then that draws the attention. The mind goes there. And under such circumstances, uh, what must be the yogi's attitude? Where should he advert his mind? So it says, whatever may be the grossness of the object will decide. Don't get involved with that. Yatta pakatam vipassana abhiniveso, that is what the commentator says, whatever may be the gross, whatever may be the more attractive, will decide the track. You just observe it. You have no controlling power on the object of the mind because the mind is go with the natural selection. You can observe it. When and where there, when, when and where there is no distraction, you keep the track with the primary object. When something distracts, you just verily know that when distracted, you is attractiveness. You know the phenomena. You don't you don't try to pull it back and put it into the primary world. It won't come because mind goes with the natural selection. You can be aware. So we 
回去呢，对这个朋友，发微信啊，参加参加，参加。Uh, due to that distraction, just come back to the primary object. That is the point I am telling. That is, don't put the uh, card before the horse. Observe what is happening. Ultimately, your theory will come and explain after thousand time experience. Don't put with the first and second experience in the theory, and then you will never uh, neutral observe. You are already conditioned. You are already with the premeditative idea, so that is to observe. That is not to observe. That is the main poison to the vipassana development. You are just a mere observer. You know that your appointed object is not the attractive thing for the moment. It is not the most the gross thing. The mind go by this natural selection. So you aware when you are aware there is nothing, you come back to the primary object. When and where something come and cross your path, be aware it is a sound, it's a pain, it's a thought, it's a uh, the sensation other than the food. That much is enough because it is natural. At the beginning, as I mentioned, it must not be an object with your hallucination. Not much with the thinking. If it is oh, you are wrong. If it is something happening under your very nose, if it is happening within your body, no harm. Mindfulness is intact. Now the mindfulness is going to say how the mind is working according to the priorities. It has its own priority on the security, on the natural selection. This is how it has been trained our mind and the body. So we have to observe how it works without an inferential, without <coughs> without a decision. So it says evil is suspended attention and suspended decision. You see, you have no control. You have no agenda. You can't run it. If you are going to run, if you are going to adjust it, you are going against the trend. So at least in the meditation, you let the thing happen. Just observe. All the other time, what you do is you are manipulating. Each time you manipulate, end up with the frustration, end up with the tension, accumulate into some more neurosis. So here you let that happen and observe. But the, but the rational mind come and say it is dangerous to let the thing happen, let loose, and they have it always wish to control. Actually, when the rational mind itself do not know its own well-being, so if it is a, what is the decisive decisive thing you are going to happen, who is assuring that it is going to get your well-being? No, it has its own agenda. So at least to see the agenda, you have to behave like a. a Criminal investigation officer, rather than a police officer. Police officer go with the uniform and have the executive powers. Now the CIA officer, he do not have, but he has observation power. He has no ex- uh, chief, uh, how do you call, it? the civil powers. He go with the normal civilian costumes and observe as if. Uh, Of the newcomer, as if a, a stranger, he just observe. Meditator also go to the meditation field, not with the uniform and the cap and everything. You go like a CIA officer. Observe after long, long observation only you can report to the police, and then the police will come and catch if you are correct. That the same example that you gave as a bird yesterday. Yeah. So when you walk, you see a bird, and you can distract. Yeah. So distractions are is a completely natural thing. So you have to observe. You call it an accident, but it, that is the life. That is the way life is happening. Unless otherwise, no mindfulness. When the mindfulness come on, you feel like it is as a mishap or the accident or kind of thing. But when that happens, if you can. Observe without the distraction, without uh, prejudgmental ideas. It's a completely new way of observation, new way of set of information you are going to get. You are observing yourself. So that is the that's a very deep, deep meaning of a person. You are behave under TV camera, and later you are going to see the clip to see how was my behavior. But in the in the mindfulness, both of them happen while filming. You can observe. 
filming, while it is right in the filming, and then on the spot you can observe how you act, how you react, how you assume, and you must try to withdraw as much as possible volitional activities and uh, the decisive activities. Let let your mind to be a, a neutral observer, and then and that moment, definitely you are living. At the all the moments you are living in a dream, or you are planning to live, and you are regretting about what is happening. But here, uh, just like a mother looking at her own baby playing, anything valid, which mother is fully attentive, the baby has given a whole chance to play. So likewise, you have to let the mind, let the, let the, let the body to play under the full surveillance full diligence and the mindfulness, but don't try to adjust the there. Get the body to play and that is the only moment body is living. Otherwise it is restrained and trained and uh, regimented. And therefore all the time the exercises are not balanced. You are, you, are, you are not away with tension, all the time with tension. So when it is happening, specifically in an accident, body work with the, in the natural way. So ultimately, whole life will be an accident. Whole life will be an electric thing. Whole life will be a novelty. That is, you are with a kind of a projections. You are with a living. You are with a dream world. I mean, it is a, it is a, it's a necessity in a civilized world. But uh, you must understand, we must live. Not only the programming and regimenting and all the kind of things we must let the life to live, and that is the way we can give the highest well-being to oneself, highest compassion to oneself. So, my, under the light of mindfulness, no accidents, anything else. Really. Okay, um, I when I meditate, um, so I, I get into a subtle state of breath, it's like a vibration. And then when I keep observing it, after, after a while, uh, if I really keenly observe it, it just, I go somewhere that I don't know, it just was not aware of all the five hungers kind of thing. And then, Come back again, just a little, like, bit, uh, Jerk. yeah, and then keep going back, you know, like that, and then it's really refreshing after, if after that kind of sits, it feels really, I feel, you know, I feel more understanding of, you know, why all this, you know, I mean, how much mind and my hand holds both of us, these five advocates, how much it bothers us. So, so th- this is a good way to continue? Uh, of course, yes. I would like to give a little more, hope, hoping it will clarify the situation. When the uh, mind goes to the, or in, if I am to, ex- if I am excused to use the Western psychology, when the consciousness try to understand the subconscious, and go to the uh, subconscious areas, you feel like you are going into an unknown area, strange area, and you feel like difficult to communicate. But even then the experience is 100 percent. That means the mind is at uh, <coughs> relax, but the sounds are there in the background, thoughts are there in the background, pains are there, but you know you are inside the bulletproof cage. They are at the periphery. And then you feel strange. Because uh, the situation is not under control. But if you are a family, a yogi, if you are an instructed person, you know you are in a better security now. You are in a better protected area. Let the mind to precipitate deeper and deeper and deeper. When you go there, slowly, 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 all the intentional activities, uh, decision-making activities, volitional activities, fabrications, storytelling, everything going to calm down. And after a level, it go going through an abyss, an area where you can't explain. It, you don't know whether you are sleeping or not. 
and we really you know how you, how much you go up to the nearing point or the threshold value and then you topple into that unknown and after a jerk you come in to know that the period you spent has not gone to memory no signs no what you call experience soon the gross sensation gross perception come on the you come to know previously i was in a very subtle perception that subtle perception is so much subtle it can't keep records after jerk after the gross perception only you come to know earlier it was in a no perception area no perception area cannot understand i am in a no perception area that is why once it become gross it comes no earlier there was no perception but the buddha says whenever the perception happened that become your attraction when the jerk happened that become your attraction because now you have to hear now you can see now you can feel the body earlier there was a gap then the buddha says if you are well disciplined if you are well instructed to understand etan santang etan panitang aditam pekha it is very pleasant it is very nutritious what is that no perception so you must not carry it away by the new perception arise and instead you must try to go back to the no perception area then only one day you will understand that is your real home all the way you get the signs and the perception and everything you lost but the rational mind find that area is as a lost <laughs> and where the science and expressibility and communication comes you feel like assuming myself egoistic comparative and the conceit this i can happen so imagine how much training you have to have not only going into that everyone goes into that everyone considers it's an accident everyone considers something going beyond control everyone feels something uncertain so therefore the buddha says there is no second person hating you there's no second person misleading you your very rational mind is the one but how to do do how to do away with the rational mind so that is a slow training the wind and where your mind goes to not the sleeping i am not referring to the uh, the sleeping with the defilements i am telling it's a gradual process to the mindfulness you can go there and once you go there the appreciation of the very thing is completely i am telling unhuman it is unhuman so therefore ways as far as you are human values you consider this as an accident a mishap a wrong thing so you have to have so much of radical thinking so therefore not only meditation can lead to it your mind outlook your view must be completely radical otherwise rational mind read it as something wrong so this is the message buddha wanted to convey with the sentient beings but they vehemently refused buddha i, I can understand i can understand why the western world can't accept this nihilistic sunyata which is not available is the truth and the day you accept it you are liberated as far as you are fighting and arguing and rational mind and linear thinking is there you consider that shunya is something amiss up Yeah, uh, I actually appreciate it, and um, I find when I when I do that kind of meditative state, when I get up, it's really refreshing. It's just clean up. Mind is all clean up, you know, at least for a while. It it really is refreshing. So if you are just that part of the what happened after. So that is the way. Then the Buddha says, "Moment you come to know samadhi, to samadhi, sankapa samadhi, to meet the correct perspective." Tamma thangkapa is you are now going to adjust yourself in order to maximize it. I mean, so, so far your lifestyle is not to maximize that. Now you have to completely radically think then samma vacha, samma kapanta, samma ajiva. You have to use kind of a talking, kind of a word in order to cut off unwanted talks. 
and to maximize as much as possible verbal relaxation. And the second thing, Samma Kammanta, you must do, you have to work because you have to get some earning for living and reduce it to the, the how do you call, moderate living. Don't try to put up with this luxurious thing and the, this thing. Ultimately, you are the person get taxed and no limits. So, therefore, go for utility value and then your the activities must be minimum for the utility value. Re- use the rest for the solitude. Use the rest for your freedom. And uh, Samma Ajiva, your livelihood, it must never disturb any other living being. It must never disturb any other thing. If it is so, you have to pay back. So therefore, the present moment must not be a burden to the future. Present moment must not be a burden to you, must not be a burden to another fellow being. So therefore, each and every moment, and be very careful, I mean, to more attentive, to have the livelihood. So once you come up to that perspective, only you are qualified to understand what is the Samma Vacha. What is a good kind of talking? What is a good kind of activity? What's a good kind of way of life? Till that people are talking, 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 good, good words and good deeds and good activities, bullshit, nonsense. Because they are activating you, agitating you. You are, you are going, go, go, show. So that is the kind of uh, world we are living. So whenever we are going to organize yourself, verbally, physically and livelihood-wise, every person considers you as a person who declared a war. You are going against the grain. The whole world is running with uh, the music and talks and oratory and kind of thing. Activities like anything. Guinness, how to get the Guinness book in your, you put your name into the Guinness books. So much of activity. And the livelihood, you don't care about the environment. You don't care about the living beings. And then you have to pay it back. So therefore, they don't want to do it, but cautiously, don't try to be smart. Do it in a very slow manner. Otherwise, you are creating repercussions. And there is again another kind of perversion going to happen and the kind of undercurrents are going to happen. So you have to understand how to uh, be in this society in a non-frictional way. Non-critical way, the Buddha says, uh, the aviruddha pratipada, uh, non-reactional way, unassuming way. And then people will definitely labeled as you are very callous, you have no sensation for the world, you are unsocial, you are selfish, you are only good for the forest, Not come, don't come to the town and the city or the society, you are yeah, unsocial kind of thing. So you have to say, yes, I am very sorry. Then uh-huh. you, know, you have to find the equilibrium and when you go a certain level and once you get the understanding, this way of living, uh, then gathering the momentum. But the transitional period is very critical, very, very involved. And therefore, uh, the number of stages, one thing is to get the correct perspective. Second thing is how to uh, change your livelihood to fit into this correct perspective. The third thing is not to antagonize others. So because it's a a one-man army. One-man army, the whole world. And uh, your whole past memory and all your abilities, so-called abilities, everything, all the credit will be a debit in the long run. All your abilities will be a disturbance or a burden in the long run. So therefore, uh, you have to see the world from the other side. So after giving a talk when I was in Berlin, uh, I think Berg, the German person, what is the use for this, t- see things as they are, what, why, what is the use of this knowledge? Well, how can I explain that? <laughs> he, after giving, of course, one hour, 30 minutes for the translation, 30 minutes for my talk, I told it is very difficult, that's something. Then I told, I can't explain, only thing I can say, what is the what is the meaning of understand the real root cause of a disease? 
เดี๋ยวเมนเมนเจอร์ก็จะได้นั่นแต่เส้นเดียวสิ่งที่จะจะสังเกตุเรื่องเดิมคือ infection แต่ที่ the meaning of understanding of primary infection exactly the same understanding the root cause so he says he can't understand I I can understand what he's telling without looking into from the this perspective without understand the root cause they are living very well why should we turn them back and ask them to swim upstream So they are all very difficult to prescribe it to someone, profess it to someone. But unless otherwise you do it to yourself, it's utter waste, waste of time, waste of money, waste of other people, waste of the environment. Having such a brilliant method available, still if you are doing this way, you can't sympathize yourself. It is not a guilt. But it's a wastage of time. Yeah, uh, Bhante. The other day, somebody asked me, "Are you blindly following uh, this religion or this sort of uh, not religion? In sense, this philosophy? What, what should I say for a question like?" Of course, the, the the blindness and the the philosophy or the act, um, the thing you do, both of them must be defined, uh, because uh, at the beginning, so-called philosophy or so-called set of instructions or religion, you don't know. So that is why you have to have a kind of a belief, kind of a uh, relying upon that, and then. Uh, You are doing something. You apply yourself, and while it is doing, if it is verifiable, your faith is not an unrooted, unfounded faith. It is something verifiable. If it is not verifiable, he is correct. So verifiability is the matter. That is why the Buddha says, what he is prescribing is verifiable within this life, which is seven years, if you are smart enough. So therefore. If you are not practicing something which is not when which is verifiable, I feel you as a fool. But at the beginning, if you say verify first and then practice, you never start. So therefore, at the beginning, you have to have a kind of an investment, and then then and there you have to make sure: Am I on the on the something verifiable, tangible? With the concrete experience, if it is so, you will find we are not answerable to others' questions because you have your own justification by practicing, and their vibration is different. Even some men come and ask. He says, Buddha says, come and look. This is something you have to come and look. And when I have this question in, the, in a, another way, ask from the O Pandita when I was in Burma. He says, if you wish to reap harvest, you have to throw away seeds. You have to cast away seeds. From that only the crop happens. If someone says, I am not happy to cast away seeds, because it's the cream of the one best thing. If I cast away, it's a waste. Like, so how can he reap something? So therefore, at the beginning, you have to. Plant some seeds. These seeds are very valuable. So therefore, this is how it happens. But ultimately, you reap huge amount and you cast. So it is a matter of time. So some people can say it is a very valuable thing. Others we can say it is a faith. So therefore, very difficult when some other person is asking to give a convincing answer because many are asking question, asking question for the sake of questioning. It's a waste of time. If someone is asking the question with a, with a responsible way, we can put it in all to the work, and we share with our direct experience and say, otherwise it's a, it's a wastage. So when I was uh, earlier before the ordination, I am so much behind the fish, meat, and the animal protein. And all of a sudden, I decided, of course, before the ordination, not to eat. All of a sudden, I became a vegetarian. So many of my university students start bullying and asking 
crazy questions and all the kind of thing. So one day one person came and asked, in our university language, why did you, why you decided all of a sudden to become vegetarian and being so animal foods, so the foods are with so much of protein. I told her, due to my unfortunate situation, I gave it up. <laughs> I am so unfortunate because it will give you the same price when you have the, <coughs> the you know, the hostel tickets. Tickets are the same price. Either you can say fish or meat or vegetarian. So they know not he can't argue with me. Stop it. <laughs> if I am going to say vegetarian is good, till the next day midnight I have to go. Do it. <laughs> He knows, I know, then I told it is due to my unlucky situation. I am so unfortunate. <laughs> that, uh, that, uh, I, I don't know, I have, earlier I used to listen to the BBC interviews. How crafty they are when they are questioning. And I, I have my fair doubt if someone come and ask the question, what I am going to do with such a person? Because they are media people, they know how to twist the truth. And they are asking questions and cornering you to the wall in a such a criminal way. So they are, I feel that uh, they are not using a knife, they are not using a bullet, they are not using a pistol, but doing the same bad thing. So there you have to understand, even if you are going to give a fair, justifiable answer, for what? No use, they are, they are coming with their own degree prepared mind, so you have to avoid it telling that I am a fool. What is the use of I don't know? Avoid. That's kind of thing. But someone is genuinely asking, definitely you have to take time and give piecemeal kind of a treatment. You also can apply yourself and see. There are actually young, young people here on every day, you know, whether they are doing okay. You know, I, I ask my son to ask you questions and I don't know, they're going in the right direction. So it's a question of the mother, not the child. <laughs> <laughs> you, you are always, you people are always walking fingers. I am simply telling him, be mindful and mind your own business. Be mindful and mind your own business. They are unspoiled. Beings. Let them find their own way. Don't try to give directions. And we are much, much better than our young stage. When we were young, we had no such an exposure. So they are, they are so lucky. And uh, the roots, they know where to find the water. It know where to find the nutrition. Therefore, roots are never direct. They are going in a crooked way because they are always searching about the food, searching about the water and it knows. And the only thing is he had to give and serve it and let them have self-service. I think that is the best for me. But maybe I am talking irresponsible talk because I am not a parent, I am not a father, why we have no children. But I, best I would say even for the elders, Serve it and ask them to have self-service. Don't try to give a serve plate. It's a kind of influence. From the Asiatic point of view, always give a served plate. But in the West, you have the buffet. You go and serve yourself. So we have to understand the pros and cons in the both the methods. But for we Asiatic, we find the good part of this. But for the Asiatic point of view, it is less compassionate. Because in the Asiatic people, you go and serve it and give and everything services, they consider it's a kind of a uh, appealing thing. So in the raising the children also, make the situation clear, let them to decide. And the only thing they have to understand, uh, you, have to, you are answerable to what you are selecting. Morally responsible about what you do, but we are ready to sympathize, we are ready to share with them, but we can't do away with this come and come result theory.
it is common for everyone. One day we will listen to their voice. Panji, is it possible to have body, kanta and relative terms quicker than your mind, sir? Because uh, sometimes what happens is as soon as I sit down I feel like I can't even feel my breath. But I feel like my mind is still superficial. So now as deep as my breath. So that, that indicates kind of a concentration is taking place and, uh, and that means body is quite settling down but the mind is still with the ripples. So that means uh, synchronize has not come but it's good for good thing. Something happened good. This kind of thing happens only in a residential retreats because the conditioning what today's sitting is conditioned the next day sitting next sitting so it has its cumulative effect but if you have a, a multitasking kind of thing hardly you get of course this is much a treatment of the multitasking character this is the what we need but you can't get it when you come to a retreat in the second day third third day fourth day onward the body of color attaching to this timetable and ultimately uh, it, uh, by, the, by the time of sitting happened it already come and sit and very calm and quiet. Mind can see, still mind with the ripples and can see the body is there. And uh, you have to daily uh, make, uh, make a point to make this comfortability more and more, make this symmetry more and more. Uh, that means regularity is one aspect sitting in the same time, in the same place, in the same kind of thing, it, it appears like going against the grain, but ultimately body very quickly acclimatizes into that. Fit into that, that indicates that soon you go there, it says in, in agriculture, uh, if you are maintaining a barn or cows, milking cows, and uh, if you are regularly doing, the time you go to the barn and start milking, everyone, the cows become prepared for milking. They start urinating and defecating and ultimately the milk you can do. You go in another time and try no milk. If you are going in the same person, go in the same time and do the same kind of thing, that sign, that sickness are communicating with the cows. They are ready with the milking. So that is the way the body language, the body knowledge. And they laugh up in the morning without yeah. you get up at four o'clock. And the body the, the, that is called biological alarm. Yeah. Okay, it seems no more questions, so we can take time for walking meditation and we'll be meeting at three o'clock. What is it in meditation? Thank you very much for the participation.